So now it's important to note that there should be no reason for me to ever touch the mesh again. In fact, I want to make sure I don't make any changes to the mesh because uh, those changes uh, may cause problems down the road. Uh, when I'm working with the model now, I'm only going to be selecting the nodes that the, uh, the mesh is weighted to. So I'm going to select the, uh, the animation node in the middle, and then I'm going to press the space bar. And that locks me into that, so I can't click on anything but that. It's going to allow me to, to focus specifically on just the animation node. And I'm, look at the, I'm going to look at the top view, and it probably would be helpful if I looked at it as a line drawing. Okay, and now I'm going to start animating. At the moment, I, uh, by default, uh, my uh, animation window here, which is doing nothing, is uh, set to 100, and I want this to move a little bit slower than just uh, 100 uh, frames. So I'm going to go over here to this icon, which is, what is it called? I think it's the time icon, and I'm going to change the length of this video from, uh, or this movement, from 100 to 200, which should be a good speed. And then I'm going to, making sure that I'm locked into my animation node, I'm going to click the set key, which is going to create a little icon right here, a little teeny marker, saying that's most my starting position. And then I'm going to set to auto key, and I'm going to move this uh, animation bar over to the center, which is 100, since I've got 200 frames. I'm going to take the rotate tool, and I'm going to make sure that this icon here, the, the snap angle toggle, is set. Uh, it'll make sure that my, my moves are precise, uh, so it'll move it in increments. So I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to rotate it halfway. So I see that's going to rotating clockwise, and I'm going to rotate um, 180 degrees. And then I'm going to click on the key uh, button right here. I'm going to move the slider all the way to 200, and then I'm going to rotate it another 180. And I'm going to click key again to make sure that it sets there and in theory this should cause a complete rotation in 200 frames. I'm going to turn off the auto key right now in the animation. I'm going to go into my perspective view again so I can see it and then I'm going to press the play button here to see what it looks like. So that seems to be working. And remember I've only animated just the node. Now um, it's giving me this sort of slow start to slow stop which uh, is really nice if you're doing something like animating an avatar or something that's organic but in the case of something that's mechanical that you want to rotate uh, at the same speed all the time there's ways in which to fix that and I'll do that next. So what I want to do next is I want to get rid of that sort of slow to start, slow stop part of the animation and make it continuous. So I'm going to click this icon over here in the lower left. And it's going to open a graph that shows me how my animation is, uh, is uh, animating over time. I'm going to scroll down here to rotation and click on the, the Z rotation. And here you'll see a... Uh, uh, this blue line kind of has a curve at the beginning and a curve at the end. That's actually uh, my animation and I want to make that a straight line instead of a curved line. So I'm going to select that whole line if I can. And I'm going to click up here to the straight line, straight angles, and click it. And now it's a straight line as opposed to curved. And if I do a test and I press the play, you'll notice that the animation is now steady over time. There's no slow start and slow stop. So now I can close this little window here and just double check that everything's going well. And that's it. I'm pretty much done. Um, all I have to do is make sure that when I import it into the editor that I have it loop so that when it rotates it just continues rotating uh, continuously. Okay, so you're almost done. Uh, because we've done a lot of the work that we would normally do at the end uh, before we started animating. Uh, I've already exported the XSF file, I've already uh, awaited and saved the mesh files. I, the only thing I have to do now is export this animation. And how I do that is, first I'll unlock my animation uh, node. I'm going to select the root node 
And now I'm going to go up and I'm going to export the, an, the animation file. So I click on export, and that is an XAF file. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to call that handle animation.xaf. Click save. And it's going once again, it's going to ask me which XSF file I am connecting this model to or attributing it to. And it's it's by default, it's chosen the candle XSF that I made earlier. And then it's going to ask me what exactly is it going to be animating. And it's important right here to to only check that element that you are actually animating. At the moment, by default, both the root and the animation node are checked. If I was to leave them both checked, when I put it into uh, the, the editor, it would actually rotate the, the root node as well. So I'm going to deselect the root node. I'm going to make sure that the animation.node is selected. Click Next a couple times, and I'm done. So I'm good to go. So the last step will be to uh, enter that animation file into the editor, and we're good to go. So my very last step happens in the InView editor. I uh, have already imported my meshes, I've already applied the textures, and I've even animated the flame effect. So the last thing I have to do is to bring in that animation file and animate my little uh, candle carousel. So I'm in the Actions tab, and I'm going to enter in the trigger field. I'm going to write uh, stance dot capital I D L E idle, and uh, that means that it's going to play the moment that that furniture item arrives. So stance idle means it's it's going to trigger the animation the second that it appears in the room. Um, I can have that animation play as a loop by under ensembles played. Uh, typing a zero, or I could add a number that determined how many times that that animation would play. Under type, because it's a room item or a furniture item, I'm going to choose room, and then down here under um, action zero ensemble, I'm going to put under extra number of loops, I'm also going to put a zero, and the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the XAF file that I created, which is on my desktop. I'm going to Enter that, and then I'm going to apply changes, and my animation starts. So that's it. That's what you have to do. Uh, at another time, we can talk about how to bring in those the meshes and the textures, but as far as animation is concerned, uh, all the steps we took earlier made it really, really simple and easy to bring our animated furniture item into the editor, and uh, all we have to do now is upload it to the catalog, and we're ready to sell it.